As we gather this morning, we acknowledge that the land upon which we dwell is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of the Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May we live with respect upon the land and in friendship and reconciliation with our neighbours. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ. Let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of the Sabbath, this is the day and this is the hour when women long oppressed stand with dignity and when your healing escapes our desire for control. May your joy stretch the fabric of our hearts and inspire us to loosen each other's bonds. Through Jesus Christ, the shamer of the powerful and the raiser of the dead. Amen. First reading from Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy for you shall go to all to whom I send you and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am to deliver you for I am with you to deliver you, said the Lord. When the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this Sunday is a portion of Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, for the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord, my God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Holy God, be our strength and our salvation, that we may never be ashamed to praise you for your mighty acts. We ask this through Jesus Christ. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. You have, you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of the trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearts, made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be atoned, to, stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less would we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what was shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God as an acceptable worship, with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a, command, is a consuming fire. Holy word, holy wisdom. Thank you, God. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grant, O oh God, that in the written word and through the spoken word, we may meet the living word, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We don't know her name or where she comes from. We don't know why she shows up at the synagogue on this particular Sabbath day. But we can see her in our mind's eye, this bent over woman, worn and wearied by long years of looking down. Seeing only the ground beneath her own two feet or the dusty feet of passers-by never a chance to greet the dawn or look someone in the eye, never able to savor the breeze upon her face or delight in the wonder of a moonlit night. She's a woman living with a limited perspective, a restricted view as Broadway theaters term those seats where the angle of the sight lines or the presence of some structural feature restricts one's view of the performance on stage. Those who opt for such seats usually do so for the reduction in price or because they're the only seats left in a fully booked house. It's their choice to settle for a restricted view. This woman in Luke's story has no choice. She lives every day with limitations life has imposed. In fact, according to Luke, she's been living like this for 18 years. Her body crippled and her spirit resigned. Was she a regular at the synagogue, I wonder? Was she known to others there? Did anyone actually notice her? Did she feel renewed or comforted as she made her way home when the worship was over? On this particular day, it seems that she just turns up. Jesus is teaching as she appears with a crowd likely gathered around him. She doesn't interrupt or ask for anything. She doesn't actually come close, though we can imagine that she hears him. 
But Jesus notices her and hits pause as far as his sermon is concerned. He calls her over and says what he always says to folks who are sick or broken. You are set free from what ails you. Then he laid hands on her and immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. Can we even imagine the relief, the release? The wonder of that moment. Immediately, she stood up straight. For years, I have loved this story for its powerful portrayal of healing. The profoundly moving transformation from the before to the after in her encounter with Jesus. But this week, this text leads me to wonder less about the woman herself and more about the church as the locus or place of healing. To wonder how often the church in our day is a powerful place of encounter, where folks who come hunched over with exhaustion, crippled with grief, or bent totally out of shape by fear, where such folks feel invited, encouraged, and released to stand up straight. How often do those who feel marginalized or disenfranchised by the powers of this world, how often do they find in the worship and community of the church a place to stand up straight, equal, and included. How often can people experiencing mental illness or poverty, immigrants, or those who are differently abled, unemployed, uneducated, or just unable to stand up on their own? How often can these folks experience the church as a place where dignity is respected? restored, and potential realized? Is our own community here at Emmanuel a safe place for anyone bent low under a burden of shame or prejudice or a heavy cloak of invisibility? Are we a place that they can learn to stand tall in their own authenticity, no matter what label or limitation life has imposed upon them. Sadly, this gospel text reveals why I might even wonder about such things. No sooner does Jesus release the woman from her infirmity than an angry voice drowns out her joyous praise with an indignant reminder that there are six days on which work ought to be done Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. Can you believe it? The leader of the synagogue is objecting to this remarkable healing because it disrupts the order of the temple worship. In reaching out to this disabled woman, Jesus is tampering with tradition and status quo for a socially expendable woman, no less. Now, in all fairness, the temple leader isn't really a villain in this situation. He's concerned that right practice be maintained within the temple. That's his job, after all. He wants to ensure that the Sabbath is honored and that God's laws are respected and traditions upheld. On the surface, there is nothing wrong with his concerns, except that in striving to protect propriety, he fails to understand what's at the heart of Sabbath, God's law and Jewish spiritual tradition. His failure lies in his lack of compassion. For compassion always takes priority over legal obligation. 
Compassion sees the broken spirit, the broken body, the broken soul, well ahead of any broken commandment. I would bet that every one of us here today knows what it feels like to be stuck in circumstances that diminish or wound us. Some of us have likely had the experience of being denied opportunity or dignity by authorities that we're unable to stand up to on our own. And God help us, some of us might still feel weighed down by the hurt we've known when our experience of church has not allowed us to feel noticed, included, and released to praise God with our own unique voice. If this is so, how can we create space for Jesus to show up and surprise us? How can we ensure that we're not so fixed on our own approach to theology, liturgy, or politics that we reject or miss out on something new or less conventional? How do we make sure that our spiritual preferences and practices don't get in the way of God's tender and compassionate unbending? God is not afraid to bend the rules for one's, for the sake of one precious daughter of Abraham, states Jesus. Sabbath or no Sabbath, Jesus not only frees her from deformity, but he restores her to community. All the while urging that community to embrace her, not with pity, but as a child of God a member of the family, deserving of dignity and love. Jesus laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight. Let us pray. God of power and compassion, unbend us in our reluctance to change our adherence to old ways, and all that restricts perspective of your purposes and your presence in our midst. Unbind us and free us to reach out to others with the compassion of Jesus. Keep us more in touch with the dignity and true stature of your children than any human rules. And make us, we pray, a community where all can stand tall in your grace and give voice to your transforming love. We pray in the strong name of Jesus, our healer and friend. Amen. Affirmation of Faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God ever near, like the woman free to stand up straight, we want to praise your amazing works of healing and the strong love you bear toward all heirs of Abraham. We trust that by your grace, wholeness and abundant life may be known. Hear us now as we raise to heaven our concerns for people of earth. God of grace, Hear our prayer. For Ukrainian people mourning the loss of life as it was, the beauty of their country and its culture, and the proud future they envisioned, be for them a strong rock. For all who live with disaster or terror due to oppression or war, 
in Afghanistan, Myanmar, Syria, Sudan, Eritrea, Iraq, Somalia, Congo, and Yemen. Give to your children courage and strength. Help them to have hope that peace will prevail. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the healing of our planet home, ravaged by wildfire, extreme heat, flooding, and drought. Help us to face our complicity in the causes of such extremes. Let that free us up to be the change needed to turn things around. Help each of us to take small steps in caring for creation so that together we may shape wholeness for all the earth's creatures and peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. We lift up all who mourn and those who know within themselves or see in others a loss of ability, a loss of independence, or a dimming of the light. For all who are near death, especially those who are fearful, and for those who have made the final journey from life to greater life. We pray for the Maruk family who lost their father suddenly this past week. And we give thanks for the life of Ludmilla, mother to Olena Ponomarenko and Pasha. Rest eternal grant unto them, O God. May light perpetual shine upon them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Summer serves up time to gather safely with family and friends, and we are grateful for the picnics, barbecues, and reunions, for the visits on decks and over the fence with our neighbors, for celebrations of life where relatives gather and for weddings. We remember especially the Verity family as they celebrate the marriage of Eric and Chloe this weekend. Enfold them in your grace and let your blessing be upon Chloe and Eric in this new chapter together. God of grace, hear our prayer. Some have asked for our prayers, O oh God and we commend them to your healing grace. For Eduardo and Saldo, Glenn and Catherine Ash, Chris Atkins, Joan and Ed Bezel, Mark Cherian, Joanne Dwernichuk, Aniko and Victor Matthias, Merce Montgomery, John Moore, Linda Popkin, Greg Vibert, Karen Wright, and Stephanie. For those whose deepest needs may be known to you alone, we ask for them your affirming and restoring grace. God of grace, hear our prayer. May the church live more fully into your work of healing and be a safe place for every seeker, whatever their need. May those needs always have priority over official agenda or timelines. We lift up our Bishop Christopher with Tracy, his wife, as we give thanks for all partners and families who support our diocesan clergy, remembering also those clergy who journey alone, that they be aware of your deep care for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Finally, in silence, we remember those who experience indifference or intolerance because of ethnicity, background, gender, or sexuality, those who are singled out because they are different, and all who are abused, abandoned, or denied dignity. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Loving Jesus, your hands are strong to hold and to heal, to wipe away tears and protect in danger. Bless all who continue your holy work of healing in hospitals, therapeutic settings, hospices, and around kitchen tables. We pray this for the good of your world and in your strong name. Amen. God of Israel, may this day be one of fulfillment and peace. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Teach us to love others as you have loved us. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Fill the world with your peace and justice. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Strengthen and relieve all those in need. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Renew the church through the power of your life-giving spirit. Holy One, hear and have mercy. Source of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the risen Christ, 
grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen.